Hey, if you want to capture fast movements while bringing out drastic changes and also maintaining colors and consistency, then keep watching. By the end of this video, you will be able to change into any character with any background and at the same time keeping track of the fast movements and also maintaining the colors of the character that you are trying to render. So we are going to use the settings from one of the previous videos as the base. If you don't have these settings, you can quickly get it from the description of the previous video. These settings use three controller models. We'll use two more. So make sure you increase the controller model cache size to five. Here's what happens when you use these settings as it is with a video that has fast movement. As you can see, it's having hard time tracking the fast movements. The nunchaku keeps getting disappeared and the clothes colors keep going back to that of the original video. Like I said, we will need five control nets for this combination. But to speed up the rendering, we're going to use LCM Sampler and LCM LoRa. If you don't have LCM Sampler option, then you can quickly follow this video and add it. Now coming to tracking the fast movements and faster objects, we're going to use Runway ML to track the objects that are moving fast. Let's say I want to track the baseball bat in this video. Then I will simply go to Runway ML, open a new or existing project, go to the green screen section and track the object. Here's a mistake that most people make. You don't have to add a lot of keyframes to track it properly. The best way to track objects in Runway ML is to use as little keyframes as possible. Find a frame where your object is clearly visible and mask it out properly. So now you have a rotoscope of the object that you want to track. Export it with a black background. Now check for the FPS of your original video and the mask that you've generated right now. It is possible that the FPS do not match which will cause problems. But to solve that, open any video editor that you use, load both the videos and retime the mask video to match the original source and then export it. So now you have a source video and a mask video both at the same FPS. You have loaded the LCM sampler, reduce the steps to 8 or 10, add the LCM LoRa in your prompt and then go to control nets. I'm not going to talk about the control nets that are loaded here because I've already done that in the previous video. On top of these control nets, you're going to add soft edge. For some reason, it's not loading for me, but that's okay. The control net will work anyway. Select head here, and we don't want any loopback mode. The weight needs to be 1. You can use even more weight if you want. And step should also be 1. And over here, give path. To the mask video. Basically, we are using the previous settings to bring out changes in the video and we are using head control and model just to track the object that's moving fast. In this case, the object was a baseball bat. But if in your video, hands or legs are moving fast, you can also track those and use head only on the mask to make sure they are rendered just like you want. You can also use this trick to mask out the face and use open pose face only on that mask part to render the lip sync better. So now we have four control net models and we're able to track the fast movements properly. But the number of control nets you use purely depends on how many objects you want to track. Maybe you want to track an object and hands. So that's two additional control net models. Maybe you want to track an object and lips. So that's one head model for the object and open post face for the lips. You get the idea. Now here's what you need to do to maintain the character details like clothes, clothing colors, just like I did in this Jackie Chan and the Metal Bat video. You need to download IP Adapter Control Net model. Go to the IP Adapter Control Net link in the description and download this IP Adapter model for ST1.5. Enable the Control Net. Change the model to IP Adapter. Choose IP Adapter Clip ST15 as the preprocessor. Over here, you need to give the image of the character that you're trying to render. So in this case, the character was metal bat. So I took this image of the metal bat and loaded it here. You need to enable control net is more important. A weight schedule needs to be less than or equal to 0.6. You can mess around with this value to find what works best for you. Using IP adapter along with the character LoRa gives the best result. For the Jackie Chan video, I trained a LoRa myself and used that along with this image for the IP adapter. And for the metal bat video, I used a LoRa from CVTI and used this image for IP adapter. Now here's a tip to 2x the generation process. You can use some tool like Adobe Media Encoder to reduce the FPS of the source video to half. Let's say your video is of 30 FPS. You use some tool to reduce the FPS to 15. And you have to do the same 
for the mask videos as well. So now we will generate the animation at 15 fps instead of 30 fps which reduces the generation time to half. And once your video is generated, you can interpolate it using this film frame interpolation option in the output tab by adding the generated video here. Or you can also use Topaz Video AI to upscale the video and interpolate it at the same time. Generating at a lower FPS and then interpolating it gives animate diff kind of effect because that's what people do in animate diff. They generate the video at a lower FPS and then increase the FPS. That's what gives this morphing kind of effect. This shows that if used properly, you can do anything with D Forum. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.